hey, Joe, it's over. It's over. At that point, it would be Michelle by by acclamation and proclamation. She wouldn't have to run in any primaries. And then you'd come up to the Democratic convention in August. It would be a coronation. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. She would be the nominee and run in the election. Will Michelle Obama be the Democratic nominee in 2024's election? A lot of folks are asking that question. And today we're going to hear the answer from Jim Rickards. This could be huge for the 2024 election. Will Biden run? What is Trump looking like? Gavin Newsom? And obviously Michelle Obama waiting in the wings there. So we wanted to get Jim's take. Jim has been amazing at predictions. He's been looking at the 2024 election and what's happening. Jim, let's break this down. Is Michelle Obama a potential for the Democratic nominee? What's your take? Right. It's a really interesting, interesting question, Matt, because first of all, the fact that they mentioned anyone, Michelle Obama, yeah, and then you hear uh, Gavin Newsom, Gretchen Whitner, Governor of Michigan, Jay Pritzker, Governor of Illinois, a couple mm -hmm. different names out there. The fact that that's being discussed at all means that no one has any confidence in Biden. I mean, when was the last time an incumbent president running for the nomination and re-election just, you know, got run off the road? Well, the answer was 1968. Uh, with Lyndon Johnson, that was a little more complicated situation. But um, so, yeah, so the first thing I would say is, yeah, Michelle Obama's name is in the air. She is doing some interviews. She rarely gives interviews. So the fact that she's doing an interview at all uh, is is pretty revealing and pretty important because she just normally doesn't do them. Um, so uh, so so that sort of shows a complete lack of confidence in Biden. Now, back to your question, um, is she going to run? Well, she can't exactly run. Let me explain what I mean by that. We're in the middle of primary season. I'm sitting here, um, you know, in, in New Hampshire. I, I live in New Hampshire. Uh, we have our primary. It's kind of exciting time because all the candidates come in and they're 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 all over the place. They're in bars and country clubs, and you know, kind of anyone you want to meet, you can kind of walk up and shake hands. Um, but uh, she's not on the ballot in New Hampshire. She's not on the ballot on any of the primary states because it's too late to file. You had to do it. You know, it wasn't like a long time ago, but by December, early January at the latest, you had to get your paperwork in. You had to get, you know, whether you had to get petitions signed or, you know, signatures or uh, meet some requirements or minimum poll, whatever the criteria are, that's over. You you got to be on the ballot and she's not. So then, so it kind of begs the question, all right, well, the Democratic convention is August um, of this year, August 2024 in Chicago, believe it or not, which uh, kind of, you know, at least for- yeah. Those who remember harks back to 1968 again, the Chicago Convention, and I wore protesters, and the and you know, Mayor Richard Daley and the police went out and kind of beat down the protesters. Um, but we'll see we'll see what happens this year. So uh, yeah, there's a convention in August. They're going to nominate somebody for president. That's what they do. Uh, and the whole primary system is: you win a primary, you get delegates. You win another primary, you get delegates. And if you get enough delegates, you get the nomination. Nobody's running against Biden except um, our friend Michelle Williamson, uh, with you know the uh, uh, crystals and uh, you know kind of uh, you know medium type thing. She is who she is, uh, interesting person. And then there is one Democratic member of Congress who's who is running against Biden. But the Democrats have done everything possible to run this guy off the ballot, even to the point where in New Hampshire, if you happen to win, uh, your delegates don't count. They, they're not going to be seated at the convention, et cetera, et cetera. So this is all either through rigging or inertia. It's all Biden. So uh, so we're going to get to March, Super Tuesday or late March. Well, March, uh, sorry, Super Tuesday is in March, but then beyond that late March you know, uh, April, May, uh, and all the delegates are going to be picked and they're all going to be for Biden. So how on earth does Michelle Obama, if she wants to get the nomination, if Biden has all the delegates? Well, here's how it would play out. I'm not saying this will definitely happen, but here's kind of the process. Um, the Democrats, you know, the Democrats are running against the Republicans and, and Trump, obviously, and they're saying he's a threat to democracy, he's a threat to democracy. The only threat to democracy I see is coming from the Democrats, because one third of the delegates at the Democratic National Convention are what they call super delegates who are not elected. I mean, these, these are the pro-democratic you know, process. One third of the delegates are not elected. They're handpicked. They're party leaders, you know, Donna Brazile, uh, you know, elected officials, Dick Durbin, the senator, Nancy Pelosi, still in the House, believe it or not. 
uh, but also down at the state level, governors, county chairs, loyal Democrats who are in the system who can be counted on are handpicked as superdelegates, but it's a third of the total. And that's not enough to get the nomination, but it's a huge block. So what you do sometime around May, I would expect, uh, you put together a, a delegation, um, a small delegation, and it might be, you know, Durbin and Pelosi in Brazil or, uh, you know, Mark Elias, he's their their big shot lawyer who, you know, kind of does, does everything possible to change the election laws so you can't have a fair election. Um, they'll make it, they'll talk to the chief of staff and they'll go to the White House and sit down with Biden. Uh, maybe it'll be done privately. Who knows? Uh, well, I mean, it will be private. Maybe it'll be, uh, you know, some other location. And they'll just say, hey, Joe, it's over. It's over. You you don't have the physical capacity. You don't have the mental acuity. You don't have the strength. You haven't run a camp. You're not really running a campaign. That's true today, by the way. We're, show me where the Biden campaign is. I mean, so the, there isn't one, uh, really. So you're done. Now, just to be clear, that does not mean they want him to resign as president of the United States. He can finish out his term, which runs to January 2025. It does mean they would want him to withdraw from the race for nomination for the November 5th, uh, 2024 election. Uh, and then they would basically kind of hold a gun to his head and say, we're ready to pull the rug out from under you, et cetera. You got to step aside. If Biden does that, and notice I said if, because there's a whole other set of issues about whether he would actually do it. But if Biden does that, then this, this would all be coordinated in advance. The superdelegates through some representative could say, you know, nice job, Joe. Uh, we understand why you're stepping aside. We, the superdelegates, endorsed Michelle Obama. Now, that gets you a third of the vote right there. No primaries, no elections that just were for Michelle. Then... Biden, at the same time that he steps out of the race, would release his delegates. He would say, hey, all, all you pledged delegates, you people we handpicked, whatever, got elected uh, in primaries, uh, you're, you're, you're now free agents. Do what you're, they'll say, do what your conscience tells you, but the truth is they'll do what the leadership tells them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then most of those delegates would just go along with the superdelegates. At that point, it would be Michelle by by acclamation and proclamation, she wouldn't have to run in any primaries. Why? But well, you know, why get your hands dirty with that? Uh, and then you'd come up to the Democratic convention in August. It would be a coronation. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. She would be the nominee and run in the election. Now that that's mechanically how it would play out. Um, just drop to drop a footnote. Biden might not play along. I mean, that might be the plan. But Biden, Biden is a, a corrupt. Um, you know, borderline senile, really like a nasty guy. And this whole, you know, six pack Joe, Amtrak Joe, Joe from Scranton. It was always a facade. It was always a facade. Biden is, is a nasty, not that bright, small minded, bitter uh, and angry individual. And that, by the way, the anger kind of goes along with the uh, dementia, um, if you know anything about that. Uh, and he's got a problem, which is, uh, you know, Hunter is. Get facing multiple indictments. That's going to get worse. There are a lot of open cases against him. will probably be indicted more. His brother, Jim, his brother, Frankie, his sister, Valerie, the whole Joe, Joe, the big guy, uh, Joe Biden himself, uh, the, the big guy. They collectively are a crime family uh, and they're going to need a pardon. Uh, and then so the question is, where do you get the pardon? Well, if you were sure that a Democrat would win in 2024, win, win the, the election, basically, you could sit back, let the Democrat win. Let's say it's Michelle. She's in the White House and she pardons all these people. Again, this would all be by prearrangement, kind of what Gerald Ford did with Richard Nixon in 1974. Uh, but the problem is you can't be sure of that. What if Trump wins? If Tr And I, by the way, as of now, I expect that. If Trump wins, he's, he's not going to pardon the Biden crime family. He's, he's going to prosecute them, maybe put it up with them or all of them in jail. So Biden might be in the situation where he's got to wait till November see who wins. If it's Michelle, okay, she gives him the pardon. But if it's Trump, he's going to have to pardon himself uh, and his crime associates, you know, Jim, Frankie, and uh, Valerie and Hunter, uh, in, the, in the transition between November 5th and January 21st. So that's his calculation. Uh, and he might just want to hang on, you know, think he can win, who knows. So put that to one side. But getting back to Michelle, what's the attraction? First woman president, um, 
kind of first black president obama was you know half black but that's you know that's okay um first woman president and then sure up sure up the black vote by the way the black vote has been peeling away to trump like it's it's in all the polls it's in all the statistics normally uh most elections the uh, african americans go 95 percent democrat and five percent republican if a republican can just get to 10 not not talking 40 or 30 just get to 10 you take five points or maybe get to 15 take 10 points that's what the polls are showing african americans are 12 percent of the american population 10 percent of 12 percent is 1.2 percent if you get a 10 percent black swing that's 1.2 percent in terms of the popular vote these recent elections have been won by like one percent or less so that by itself forgetting about everything else hispanic votes and 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 a lot of other uh movement uh forgetting about everything else that by itself would be enough to elect trump i i think he'll do better than that but does michelle somehow sure up the dem the black vote inside the democratic party generate enthusiasm generate turnout that's the scenario that's the scenario i would just add one, one last thing matt on this whole thing we'll, we'll just see how it plays out i think she would be maybe the worst candidate in history i i said that about hillary clinton uh i was the one of a handful of people is me steve bannon and literally a couple other people not not including trump not including um uh melania and, and his family members who said trump would win in 2016. Uh, i said on live tv before the election it wasn't like an after oh look at me i was like i said it uh the, the you know in the the anchor uh, 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 Francine uh, uh, Lakwa, um, very nice, uh, nicely. Her jaw dropped. She couldn't believe uh, I said it. But anyway, uh, so uh, but now it's uh, it's completely different. But I said Hillary was. I knew Trump would win for a number of reasons, but one of them was that Hillary was like the worst candidate. Michelle might be worse than that. Everyone's like, oh, she's this bright, successful, you know, etc telegenic yeah she's got all that she's got that package but when you actually listen to her and you actually go back and see what she said um she's worse than obama she's a, a real neo-marxist i think that'll show through so anyway let's see what happens it's real i'm not saying she's going to i'm not saying the scenario is going to play out what i'm saying is if she wants to be the nominee that is how it will play out because it's too late to win any primaries yeah um, and again, I know we're months and months away from the election. So I'll just throw you another two questions here. One would be if you so just on the Democrat side, you've got Biden, Newsom, Michelle Obama as kind of the three. Yeah, you uh, hear about you hear about, the you, Could you yeah, break you down? What do you think? Go, I was just going to say, what do you think like a percentage on those of like which one ends up as the main? And, and again, that's just snapshot from now. Yeah, like, I kind of. I I mean, Michelle Obama did an interview recently. He said, that's rare. She just doesn't do them. Uh, a little bit on her book promotion, but but that's about it. Um, and me, people immediately jumped and they said, oh, she's in the race. She's going to run. Off. Okay, that's, you know, that's fair reporting. But there's another possibility here, which is Obama and David Axelrod, who was Obama's campaign manager in 2008, mm -hmm. going all the way back, have been saying publicly, hey, Joe, you know, get get in gear here. You're you're not doing anything. You're not out. You're not raising money. You're not. You don't have a big staff, et cetera. Get your campaign going. You don't have any opposition in the primary season to speak of. Um, so did she go out there with this interview as a um, what's the right word? Uh, just as a way, kind of like a head fake to get Biden off the dime, as we say, as we say in New Jersey, get him off the dime. Um, I I, uh, I don't know. Was it a real tease, like, hey, maybe I'm going to run? Or was it, uh, I'm going to pretend I'm going to run just to get Joe in gear? Or both, you know? I mean, options are, are wonderful. Maybe she's playing both sides of that. Gavin Newsom is all set to go. He's got his hair gel um, in, in place. Uh, he's, you know, working on his tan. Um, he's, you know, Mr. California. He's got a problem, which is California is falling into the Pacific Ocean. You know, San Francisco is a is a ruined city. They're, they've happened throughout history. I've actually studied a lot of rise and fall of a lot of cities and empires. It happens. Um, San Francisco's done. LA is not far behind. They have a sixty eight billion dollar state deficit. That's not the U S deficit. Bad enough. Sixty eight billion state deficit. 
they're talking about raising taxes like, oh, you haven't done enough to drive business out of California. Now you want to make it worse. They're also talking about a wealth tax. A wealth tax is not an income tax. You can make no money and still owe the wealth tax. They just look at what you want. And Mark Zuckerberg is a good example. Um, he's worth whatever, 100 billion, you know, one of the, uh, maybe more than that, one of the richest people in the world. But mm -hmm. if you if you own Meta stock, it used to be Facebook, now it's Meta. If you own Meta stock as a founder and it's gone up, whatever, I don't even know, a thousand times or maybe 10,000 times, mm -hmm. you, don't owe, you don't owe any tax. It's only when you sell it. If you sell the stock, you got to pay the capital gains tax. But if you sit on the stock or give it to a foundation, which he has, you don't owe any tax. You don't owe any income tax. But a wealth tax comes along and says, we don't care. We're just going to look at what you own. We're going to look at your wealth, property, stocks, et cetera, and tax you on that, even though you didn't sell it, you don't have any cash. Um, that's a wealth tax. They do it in France. Uh, they actually come into France. They surround villages and they, they go in and make sure all the uh, people claiming vineyard exemptions are actually growing grapes. But um, you know, in Greece, they hire drones to fly over people's swimming pool, no, to fly over wealthy neighborhoods to see if you have a swimming pool because a swimming pool means you're richer than you pretend you are, et cetera. Anyway, so my point being, they're doing everything possible to drive the talent and the wealth out of the state. They're mm -hmm. welcoming the immigrants. Okay, fine, but these people don't have jobs and they cost you money because you're putting them on on uh, state uh, health benefits and educational benefits and everything else. He's, and then, uh, you know, crime is out of control, carjackings, drugs, and worse. So, um so is that a record you want to run on? I mean, okay, he's got the good looks and the hair gel, but I'm not sure that that gets you very far. Gretchen Whitmer is, uh, she's, I put her in the neo-fascist category, but, you know, she looks good on TV and she's got a bit of a record. Jay Pritzker's got the money, you know, the major hotel uh, owner operators. Um, and uh, and don't rule out Jennifer Grantham. Uh, she's the secretary of energy, but she's a hard shell, green, new scam. Mm -hmm. Uh, neo-Marxist. So they, they do have a little bit of a stable. And then of course, Michelle. So we'll see, we'll see what happens, but everything I'm saying, everything we're talking about depends on that scenario I laid out where you go to Joe and say, you're done, you're out. And mm -hmm. then we're going to acclaim or pro proclaim somebody as the nominee because there's no other way to do it. It's too late to run in the primaries. Yeah. And if he doesn't fall on the sword then then who knows what happens he's actually on the ballot which is crazy which no one that would actually be a surprise at this point because everyone and including yourself like uh, we, we can't see it happening one well, more question sorry, sorry it might be a surprise to everyone except uh joe and dr jill because remember they they <laughs> yeah. have a, they, they want him in the white house because that's the only reason they're not in jail yeah um one more question and we'll wrap up election talk any other we're super early here in uh 2024 but any other developments that have happened recently and again it doesn't have to be with michelle obama or newsom or anything but anything that that's playing into how you're seeing the uh the election anything trump's doing well or the democrats are doing like anything any other outliers that we should keep an eye on yeah the iowa caucuses were, were interesting like everyone knew trump was going to win and he did win and and went big and that so that was not a surprise but the one kind of asset test people were looking at uh including me was um could he get more than 50% of the vote? Everybody everybody knew he would win. Uh, I think Ron DeSantis finished second. Nikki Haley finished third. That maybe came as a surprise to some people. But the but the 50% plus, I think it was like 51, uh, was, sort of, was important because what it means, because the, the theme, if you hate Trump and you're a Trump basher, you're a rhino, all these people. Uh, and by the way, Nikki Haley's getting most of her money from Democrats and kind of Bush Republicans and rhinos and Trump haters. It's not like yeah. mainstream Republicans. Um, or, so, but the point was, if only the opposition, you know, Chris Christie, Asa Hutchinson, Ron DeSantis, you know, Nikki Hill, could could unify behind one candidate, one anti-Trump candidate, and to combine all those votes and get over 50%, you could beat Trump. That was the theory. Well, Chris Christie dropped out, Asa Hutchinson dropped out, Vivek Ramaswamy dropped out, et cetera, Tim Scott and others. And the vote was consolidating. But the point is, Trump still got more than 50 percent. In other words, if you mm -hmm. took all if you took all the non-Trump voters combined, and I'm not saying they will combine because they have their own disagreements. If you took them all combined, they still can't beat Trump. So I don't want to say this is over. That's kind of you know, full wish when it comes to politics, anything can happen, but it kind of looks like it's over. 
Um, so we got, I'm, I'm sitting here in New Hampshire. Uh, we're waiting for our, um, our uh, New Hampshire primary coming up. Uh, I would apply the same test if, if Trump gets, Trump's going to win. So, okay, we kind of know that. But if he gets more than 50%, it really is over. Because what it says is that even if all, if all the other, even if all the opposition combined, you still can't beat him. Yeah. Well, we'll be looking forward to the, the boots on the ground research there. Thanks for the input. Again, we're seeing that yeah. question about yeah. Michelle everywhere. If anybody's got any comments that's watching, put them down below. We'd love to hear yeah. what you think about it as well. Yeah, um, there's the, the, the one thing I would say is that there's a scenario where she could decide to run and she could not run, but, you know, put her name in, in a, throw her hat in the ring and get the nomination. I think she'll lose uh, in, in, the, in the general election. I think she's a lousy candidate. All right. Well, you all heard it here first. There's a lot of moving pieces for the 2024 election, and the only way to stay up to speed is make sure you're subscribed to our channel below. Jim has given predictions, he's given updates, and there's a lot of things happening. Moving parts, dates, people, topics, it's all happening here in 2024. Thanks so much for tuning in. Give us a like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.